Hello, this is SME TV and I'm your host, Angela Vithulkas. And this is our five in five show. That's five tips in five minutes, plus a little bit about our experts as well, just as a bonus. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can support us and all SMEs and you can share, like and comment. Today, we look at strategies for the hospitality industry specifically on their reopening or relaunching in this new coronavirus world. Joining us today with her five strategic tips is Chrissy Simonakis, founder, writer, author, and managing director of Creative Little Souls. Welcome, Chrissy. Hi, Angela. Thank you for having me. Chrissy, this is a very unique time for the hospitality industry in Australia, and we know that it's dominated predominantly by SMEs. Um, so many hospitality businesses are lots and lots of small businesses Absolutely. and they've all been and they've all been really hit hard Chrissy by the COVID-19 coma that they were forced to be in I and mean, when you've got government saying close stay home, it shut down so many of their businesses but your company Chrissy has been dwelling in the hospitality industry for years you've been advising hospitalities industries and businesses right around the world. You've been helping them pivot, rebrand and market their brand. How do us Aussies stack up against other global businesses? I think Australia is doing a fantastic job. Uh, we have many clients internationally and they are really looking to see what we're doing here, how great we have been pivoting and adapting. And I think we're really driving the industry across the globe now in Aussie. So are you finding that some of your international clients are communicating with you and saying, you know, how are you guys coping with this? What are you guys doing about that? So we're, it, it's good for us to feel that we are world leaders in something and in particular yes. in our food industry. I mean, we've got some of the best produce in the world, certainly Absolutely. some of the greatest chefs, I think. Yes, for sure. Yeah, they're asking for ideas, suggestions, uh, what other small businesses, medium-sized brands are doing. Yeah, they're really looking to us to see um, how can they take that information and knowledge and then impart it in their own businesses. And just briefly, um, how are some of your international businesses in hospitality, how are they facing their own coronavirus issues there? Because we probably haven't felt it as hard as as they may have overseas. What are you hearing in that regard? Yeah, it's pretty heartbreaking because I lived and worked over there for a while. So I have quite a strong hospitality network there. And a lot of staff were furloughed, a lot of businesses shut down. And yeah, it's like a completely different world, I think. Like, I think we're quite naive to, you know, what the repercussions are and how that detriment will affect them versus what we've had going on here. So do you think, it's very do you think they'll take longer to bounce back than our Aussie businesses? For sure. I reckon they are probably at least six months behind us. That's, that, that's heartbreaking to hear. Yeah. But off the base of your knowledge, we're going to look at five in five, and mm -hmm. that's strategic tips for the hospitality industry. So uh, hospitality strategies, marketing has never been more important. Chrissy, tip one, it's a new world. Understand restrictions and changes. What have you got to offer our, our people on that one? This would have to be my biggest tip and it's what keeps me up at night, sifting through legislation and looking at blogs and articles is to really understand what is um, in place for you as a business and how these new legislations, changes and guides will support you and also what your responsibility is. And I think if it's all overwhelming and the information isn't clear to you, utilise the resources where you can jump on the phone with someone ask those questions and seek out that help so your understanding of what your responsibilities are and what you need to do. Because you, you have to start from that first, that first strategy tip in order to then be able to plan everything else moving forward. So you have to know what your limitations are. If there are any, you need Absolutely. to know what they are. Absolutely. Yes, for sure. So tip two, talk to your customers. What have they missed about you? Yes, I think this is a really important one. So rather than us uh, going and thinking that we're going to do take-home meals or we're going to do a degustation or something like that, we know that customers have a reduced budget and spend at the moment and we want to actually ask them, hey, what have you missed the most about while we've been away? So you can do up a web form that can be a survey, pop a post on your socials, email your database and just say, what have you missed the most? Are we going to do a best of menu? Are we going to just do takeaway and delivery? But definitely survey them, ask them what they want, and then build from that. 
So the strategic tip here is don't assume. Correct. Find out and be sure. And I think you'll be really surprised when you actually ask your customers. Uh, they actually put forward some really great ideas and we've actually implemented some of those. And then they love feeling that they are involved in your business. There's that community and then they're even more loyal customers for you. That's so we all like to be right. So I'm sure that that feeds into that too. Yes. Tip number three, don't be influenced or feel additional pressure that you have to reopen fast. Absolutely. So we monitor and manage a lot of inboxes for clients, whether it be email, Instagram, Facebook, and there's just been a barrage of messaging about when you're opening, can we book, can we do this? Uh, some venues have been in, um, I call it dormant mode. So they've been closed for a little while or have been doing renovations or they've adapted their business uh, to do delivery. Don't let the customer put pressure on you to open your doors do the maintenance, do the cleaning, understand the legislation, but also don't be angry with them that they're loving you so much and want you to return. Yep. So it's just finding a nice balance. So time it well, make sure that you can actually deliver what they're asking from you. Absolutely. Uh, if, if you've been taking advantage of this time to do a lot of renovations and, and suddenly, because it is almost quite sudden that we are going to be allowed to reopen slowly, you yes. might not be quite ready. So finish the plan. Mm -hmm. and then be ready to start quickly but safely. Yeah, and I also think there are a lot of operators who have been working during this time, Yeah, and they're tired. They need a day off. Like, have a few days off, come back fresh, and then get ready to go again. And then, and then get stuck into it. Okay, yeah. tip four, don't always sell on your socials. Uh, this is one of my biggest tips that I always um, encourage people, and this is why we do a lot of marketing and socials on behalf of businesses. It's don't always say, come to my restaurant, buy my produce, you know, drink at my bar, but actually share um, stories about your staff, about the history of the venue, uh, where a certain producer or provider is from. Actually utilise your socials to tell a story and um, really, really connect with those people out there so they know what you're about. And that's, in, that's important um, to, to consider that, engagement and communication with your customer is about sharing that story. It's not about buy my schnitzel yes. sandwich. Yes, that's right. But where did the schnitzel come from? That, Talk to me about the journey. Yes, yeah. that's right. Who invented it? Yeah, that's a big argument, that one. <laughs> tip five. I, I like this one. Tip five. Make a plan and write it down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm very much a visual person and I think a lot of people are as well. I think if you actually write down, map out and then put some timelines on things, you're far more successful at actually putting those to market. I think as well, just pick one and then implement that, deploy it, see how it goes, then do another one. If you have too many promos, offers and messages out in the marketplace, not only do your staff get confused and then they might not know how to redeem them or what's what, but your customers get confused as well. So just take it one step at a time. And you make it harder for yourself. For sure. Absolutely. You can drown in good ideas and execute none of them. Yep. Whereas if you, if you plan to see it through, you get to learn along the way as well and see what works and what doesn't work from lots of different aspects Chrissy. So, you know, yes. maybe your process is letting you down and you need to fix that. Maybe it's not the offer. Yes. It, it's always important. I, I find that writing the plan down is what often shows the weaknesses and the strengths of the idea. Yeah. And we actually, we actually have created, um, I call it my playbook. Like I really thought long and hard about whether I would release this because it's always been our best selling product, but we have, and it's a marketing calendar and social media strategy with all the days of the year right. for hospitality venues. And we give them so much and love and support with it because that's where our love and roots run as well, is HOSPO. So it, it's a little bit of a structure to help them with a plan. Absolutely. Yep. It's all there. It's a printable. It's got all the days you can talk about. Lovely. Okay. Well, in hospitality, that's important because if it's one less thing for you to do, then you can get on, get on with the job of making it and selling it. For sure. Absolutely. Thank you very much for those tips and especially the strategy around them and how to help our hospitality industry get back on their feet to either reopen or relaunch their brand. That's Chrissy from Creative Little Soul. To our viewers and our listeners, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can support us and all SMEs and you can share, like and comment 
A big shout out as usual to the SMEA Association of Australia for supporting us and making this all possible. And an even bigger thank you to Chrissy for sharing some strategy and some tips, particularly, particularly Chrissy to the hospitality industry. And we look forward to speaking to you again. Thank you so much. And if anybody has any tips or comments, strategies or big ideas, you can email them to us, news at smea.org.au. And of course, Chrissy, we're on all the socials. We'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Thank you, Angela.